one. Thank you. Good evening. This is Chairwoman Makita Scott. I call to order the Board of Education of Baltimore County's public hearing and work session on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. At this time, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. This evening's Board of Education meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams Live. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, any vote, voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. The registration form for the public hearing was available to the public online and closed at 3 p.m. yesterday for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's hearing. Your name will be called in the order of registration and the next speaker's name will also be called and asked to be on deck and ready to provide their comments. Each speaker will be given three minutes to speak on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. This public hearing is not the forum to speak on any other topics. For example, the capital budget, the reopening of the schools, etc. I ask speakers to observe the three minute limit and conclude remarks when time has expired and you hear the tone. The call will be ended and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related to the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. So with that, our first speaker tonight is Miss Diana Bergman, who will be followed by Sarah Hammock. Miss Bergman, are you ready? Thank you. Yes, this is this is Diana Bergman from Southwest area of Baltimore County. Um, good evening, um, board members and BCPS employees. Um, today I want to talk about some challenging stuff that we've had regarding our operating budget in the past. And I am really concerned as a parent if this current board makes decisions to cut anything in our operating budget specifically to do with technology or our curriculum and instruction. Because right now we are still seeing schools that don't have working Wi-Fi yet. I don't know why they're having these technical issues, but it's making it difficult for our principals and administrators that go in the building to be able to support teachers and staff and our students and parents to keep that communication flowing. The curriculum is very important. Over the years, we've seen cuts to the curriculum, cuts in areas like right now, we're seeing with history, social studies, world culture, um, our expectations is not what it's supposed to be, especially with everything going on right now. I think our curriculum instruction in social studies and world history needs to be upgraded. We need to provide a curriculum that's gonna meet the needs to help educate our whole community and our students so they can have an understanding of what it is to be civil, how policies are made and how our government functions. People have the right to be educated in that. I also am very concerned of safe safety guards that we need to have moving forward when it comes to technology. We don't know when we're returning back. What we do know is that right now we're learning virtually and remotely and our teachers and our staff and our parents need to have safe, secure supports in place and have the funding to be able to support that and operate in a safe manner where we're protected and can deliver a quality of instruction that our children deserve under the current circumstances. So thank you very much for your time. And I really hope you consider to ask to make sure we get what we need to operate and how we're operating today with all the challenges ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bergman. The next speaker is Shara Hammock, and on deck will be Katie Reisner. Ms. Hammock, you can go ahead. Scott, I believe you can go to the next one. 
OK, certainly. Our next speaker is Katie Reisner, and then on deck will be Cindy Sexton. Ms. Reisner, you can go ahead. Hi, my name is Katie Reisner, and I am the parent of three children, two of whom are school age and attending Baltimore County Public Schools. My husband and I are big believers in education, having graduated from uh, public schools ourselves and are committed to public education for our children. I have never come to speak to you before, but right now I think the situation is such that I needed to come here and speak. Hard times call for hard decisions. The county is currently facing a budget shortfall and the school system is the single largest line item in the county budget at $2.3 billion. Thousands of families have disenrolled their children knowing that digital learning isn't meeting their needs and school buildings have been closed for 10 months. This should result in considerable cost savings in terms of energy usage, maintenance, busing, et cetera. The school system also received millions of dollars in CARES Act funding, and yet here you are asking for more. I would ask that you refuse to move forward on any budget until BCPS voluntarily agrees to outside fiscal oversight mechanisms. The reality is that currently BCPS seems to be acting with impunity. There are serious concerns with financial irregularities, no bid contracts, and the superintendent still refuses to disclose how much money was paid in the ransomware attack. BCPS currently seems to answer to no one, refusing requests for information from the Board of Education, the county executive, the county council, the local police, the local attorney, and state IT experts. You have members of your senior staff that brag on social media about not responding to parents' concerns, and you don't listen to your auditors when they tell you to shore up your IT system. Given the serious amount of money that is spent in the Baltimore County school system, I think it is only right that there be some sort of oversight mechanism in place so that we know where these billions of dollars are going, because currently we don't know, and that's the problem. As much as I hate to come here and tell you to hold up the budget process, that is exactly what I'm doing right now. Because otherwise, I don't think that the superintendent or the school system is going to listen to anything else. I'm asking that you not move forward until there is a budget oversight mechanism in place to know where every dollar is going. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reasoner. And on deck, we next have uh, Cindy Sexton. Good evening, Chairwoman Scott, Vice Chair Han, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. There has been one constant in this chaotic and challenging year, educators showing up and doing their jobs. Through the pandemic, the ransomware attack, and everything else, our educators have been there with and for our students, academically, emotionally, socially. While very much struggling with all this year has brought to our educators personally, they rose and continue to rise to face and conquer each challenge that has come to them so they can be present for our students. Thank you educators for all you do every single day for our students. The BCPS budget request must put student needs and services above all else. To move forward, you need to ask the county for more. Dr. Williams, you have said many times that what is happening in the classroom is the most important thing and that we need to take care of our people. Well, we agree. We need fully staffed schools with the support and resources our educators and our students need to be able to reach and teach our students where they are and move them forward in learning. This budget request must focus on our students and their classrooms, be they virtual or in the schoolhouse. So to move forward, you need to ask the county for more. Our educators deserve to be compensated for what they do every day, but especially this year, when they have been one constant in the lives of our students, when they have gone above and beyond over and over. They pivoted, shifted, and so much more. And no matter what, they've been there for our students. We need a budget that moves BCPS forward. And we do that by properly staffing our schools and properly compensating our educators. It's also time to address and fix the length of school day concerns that have been part of budget discussions for years. We cannot let our students slip through the cracks by understaffing and under-resourcing their schools. And we cannot afford to lose our great educators by driving them from the system or the profession by not paying them what they are worth. So please, in all budget conversations and decisions, 
remember that we are a system of education and we need enough great educators to give our students what they need. Let's move BCPS forward together and let's start by asking for a budget that meets the needs of our students and educators. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sexton. Uh, next we have Ms. Beverly Folkoff. Good evening. Hello. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beverly Folkoff, and I'm a special education teacher at Relay Elementary School. And I'm here to talk about the importance of adopting a comprehensive budget that meets the needs of our students and our educators. We tell our students every day that they can do anything. We ask our students to share their hopes and dreams so that we can help make them realities. But we're never going to be able to do that unless we have the manpower, the time, the support, and the fair compensation that we need. Next year's budget must contain more mental health and social supports for students. I am not prepared as a teacher to help students process the grief of losing a family member, a parent, a friend, or a classmate to COVID and many of our students will need just that. I'm also not prepared to help a family that has lost income and finds themselves food insecure, homeless, or at the end of the rope. We need a budget that creates, a new, creates new mental and social health positions so that our students can thrive while I teach. The one new position that is currently been proposed is not enough. We need a budget that provides staff with steps and colas that we deserve. This year has driven many teachers from the field. We have dealt with constant changes, increased workload, fear, and a painful level of stress. It has affected our teaching lives, our personal lives, and our families. We deserve to have a competitive wage that not only encourages teachers to stay in the county, but to want to become part of this team. Our students need time in the classroom, time with their teachers, and time to regain their lost skills. The next school year, the school day must be increased to meet this demand and teachers must be compensated for it. Passing a maintenance of effort budget is a slap in the face to teachers who constantly strive to move our students and our school system forward. It will do nothing but turn us back. Our students are going to come to school with more emotional needs, more social needs, and more academic needs, and teachers are coming back with their own trauma from this experience. We need a budget that moves our system forward and allows us to help our students achieve their dreams and truly be able to do anything they want to do. Please refuse to adopt a budget that is a maintenance of effort budget, but instead demand a budget that provides us with the mental and social support, the fair compensation, and the extended school day that we need. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Folkoff. And our next speaker is Marcy Cook, and on deck will be Shea Savoy. Ms. Cook, you can go ahead. Good evening. I am Marcy Cook, a math teacher at the Crossroads Center and the Vice President of TABCO. As an educator at an alternative school, I need to look out for my students as they have already fallen through the cracks due to large class sizes, bullying, and feelings of marginalization. This has been the most traumatic year that we have ever faced. We have all been dealing with a pandemic. Students and staff are going to need support staff more than ever when we move into next school year. Loss of lives, economic, economic struggles, mental illness, and addiction issues are soaring due to the pandemic. On top of these issues, students and staff had to deal with a ransomware attack. Last year, Dr. Williams proposed 20 added support staff positions. This year, only one. Please demand for more support staff as we are going to need more school counselors, social workers, and school psychologists. As Vice President of, Ta of TABCO, I strive to recruit and retain lifelong educators. Last year, 85% of BCPS resignations were of early career educators. They are leaving the profession because they do not feel supported or they are fleeing to neighboring counties where they can earn a more respectable salary. This year, many of our seasoned ed teachers are considering retirement. We need to make sure we are working together on retaining our educators. Last year, educators received a COLA and no STEP. This year, Dr. Williams is proposing a STEP and no COLA. Many of our members were angry last, that last year we did not get a STEP and health insurance increased. 
if we only get a step in no cola, then our most dedicated teachers that have worked over 30 years will not be recognized with an increase in compensation. The maintenance of effort budget does not consider the needs of our students. Students are having more needs for special education and mental health services. To help our students improve on their learning deficits from this year, we need smaller class sizes and an extension of the school day. We have had, we have a county council that is very supportive of education. Please include in your budget and ask for our salaries and extra positions so that we can give our students the education they deserve. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Cook. The next speaker is Shay Savoy and on deck will be Kelly Garrison. Ms. Savoy, you can go ahead. I'm not sure. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Shay Savoy. I teach English at Woodlawn High School and I am a proud Woodlawn warrior. And what I want to talk about tonight is the need for more staffing in our schools. Last year, Dr. Williams had many positions added to the budget, such as special educators, counselors, psychologists, and other support personnel. And this year there was only one. And I wanna tell you about one of my most beloved students who I'm gonna call Dee. And I'm gonna talk about a story from last year before we were hit with this pandemic when we were still in the school buildings because eventually we will return to our school buildings. So when Dee came to me to my creative writing class, he had a transcript that was full of failing grades and a discipline record that was several pages long. Dee had an IEP in writing and in reading, and he also um, suffered from mental health issues. But when Dee came to my class, to my creative writing class, he showed himself to be a gifted creative writer and creative thinker. And Dee came to me and trusted me because as a young gay student who had experienced years of bullying that had only compounded the other challenges that he was dealing with, as a gay educator, I was able to provide support that he wasn't able to get elsewhere. And I bring that up because our students need diverse educators. One day in my class, Dee had a panic attack um, based on, I'm not sure what, um, and he was convulsing and non-responsive. Um, he collapsed into my arms and I called frantically trying to reach someone who could come and support me. As an English teacher, I am very skilled at building relationships with students. I am very skilled at teaching students how to write and read and talk effectively. But what I am not skilled in is providing health services. So I called and tried to reach our one school nurse for our 1600 student school and our one social worker. And eventually I was able to get an administrator to come and help provide the medical support that my student needed. Now, what I also want to say about this student is that because of his access to an educator who understood him, to the arts, to creative writing, to being able to have a safe place to come, this student also was able to improve his grades in his other classes because by having qualified, diverse, supportive educators and support personnel, students have what they need to succeed. So with a maintenance of effort budget, we were underfunded before COVID. Now is not the time to make devastating cuts that only hurt kids. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Voigt. And uh, the next speaker is Kelly Garrison, and on deck will be Christina Lanahan. Ms. Garrison, you can go ahead. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Sorry, yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Kelly Garrison, and I'm a first grade teacher at Villa Cresta. 
And like my other colleagues, I'm working tirelessly every day to meet the needs of my students. I know my late nights of planning and meeting with students one-on-one -on -one and in small groups and providing meaningful asynchronous work is not in vain, and it's the safest option right now. I see the evidence of my students and how they are continuing to grow and meet grade level standards. But in spite of my efforts, the reality is my students, our students need more. My students need all of you to remember them by including smaller class sizes and extended school days in the budget to provide for the additional time to help make up for the loss of school-based learning due to COVID. Our students also need you to remember them to include additional support staff. We know that as a result of this pandemic, many of them are dealing with mental health issues and their needs will need to be met. So please, um, one, just adding one support staff is not enough. We need more. Another reality that I face every day is that I am not able to afford to continue to teach in BCPS. I love teaching. I'm not burned out. I love what I do and the difference that I can make with my students, both by meeting their academic and social emotional needs, but I may be left with the choice to leave BCPS because I simply can't afford to stay. I'm asking on behalf of myself and other BCPS colleagues who are being faced with the same reality to think about us in this 2020 up operating budget. Help retain wonderful teachers like myself who are giving their all and giving their best to their students, but we just can't afford to stay. So don't we deserve better? We can't wait. We need a budget that will give us proper compensation to help retain teachers in DCPS. Thank you for listening. And because we deserve better, and our students deserve better, I'm asking that you please take into consideration these needs as you begin to work on the 2020 operating budget. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garrison. The next speaker is Christina Lanahan, and on deck will be Taylor Boreen. Ms. Lanahan, you can go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. OK, thank you. So I want to thank the board for giving me this time to speak. My name is Christine Lanahan, and I'm a K-5 inclusion special educator at Seven Oaks Elementary. Before this, I taught outside of general education preschool and pre-K, and I've been the chair of the special education working and action group for TABCO for three years. I bring up all of this because my 10 years with BCPS has brought me into contact with many, many other special educators. And what I've learned is our special educators are drowning. Our caseloads are high, yet positions are cut every year all over the county. We are asked to provide specialized instruction, and we do. And support our general educators or run self cleaning classrooms, and we do. And then asked to be behavior support when needed in a crisis situation, and we do. And asked to be experts in student trauma so that we know how to support those students and families and the general educators that teach them, and we do. And we are asked to be experts in social emotional learning to provide support to students, families, general educators, and to help our counselors, and we do. And we're expected to be psychologists and help our students with their personal issues since our school psychologists are stretched to the max in multiple schools and only really have time for testing a team. And we do that too. Oh, and in between all of that, we need to, um, sorry, in between <laughs> all of that, we need to find time for the ever to complete the um, ever increasing paperwork with changing expectations from year to year. This county is doing a disservice to our special educators, our students with special needs, and their families. Teachers shouldn't have to decide between having planning or giving a student the extra support he or she needs. Families shouldn't have to feel like they aren't heard because schools have to rush through teams to fit them all in. Students should feel successful and fully supported every single day in their classroom, and it's not happening. We need more highly qualified special educators and support staff in this county, and yet there is not proposed funding for new teachers. We need the extra time in the day to work on the above countless responsibilities, but there's no proposed funding to, pro to properly compensate teachers for this. And we need to continue to attract highly qualified special educators to our county, but instead, we're seeing our teachers leaving in drones. Our special educators are drowning. We need you to make sure we have the funds that are needed to save them. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Ms. Lanahan. The next speaker is Taylor Boreen. Hi, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Taylor Boren, and I am an art teacher at Logan Elementary. I am here tonight to advocate for a budget that moves us forward, not back. We have known for some time that schools are chronically underfunded. For me, this has never been more evident than in the last 10 months. With the necessary switch to virtual learning, myself, like many other educators, had to pivot quickly in order to learn new technology and develop new best practices. Since last March, I have learned how to film and edit videos and develop proficiency in a range of new software and platforms. I wrote and am implementing curriculum that introduces more artists of color and aims to expand students' thinking about the why behind works of art. I readily learned all of these new skills despite a freeze on my step increase and while teaching 23 classes per week. Our part-time art position was cut last year, so six of my 23 classes are doubled to ensure that I can see all of my students each week in a virtual setting. This means between 30 and 50 students come at once during these doubled classes. In 50 minutes with up to 50 students, it is nearly impossible to teach a coherent lesson while also providing the time students need for one-on-one -on -one check ins and just a chance to connect on a social and emotional level. Today alone, I taught 147 students over five class periods. Of those 147 students, some have an array of art supplies at home while others have none. I make sure that every student has a pathway for completing assignments which often means planning not one lesson, but two to three lesson pathways that account for student choice and circumstance. If this budget is truly about people, that should be reflected by providing desperately needed staffing increases and proper compensation for educators. I implore you to pass a budget that puts more educators in school buildings. I implore you to pass a budget that adds time to our school day so that we can begin the recovery process from this global pandemic. Let's create a budget that moves us forward. Let's rebuild together and create a stronger team BCPS. And let's start that process by valuing our educators through fair pay and honoring the strengths, struggles, and resiliency of our students by funding the educators and resources they need and deserve. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Boreen. And um, Ms. Boreen was our last speaker. So um, the Board of Education will now recess for five minutes to begin, to begin its work session on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. An additional link to view the upcoming work session was provided on the board's webpage and on tonight's board docs agenda. An additional work session will be held on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. Written comments may also be sent to board members via email at boe at mybcps.info, which will be compiled and sent to all board members. Thank you. We will now recess. Good evening. The board meeting is now back in session. The next agenda item is the first work session on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. For the board's approval at their April 14th, 2020 meeting, this work session will be limited to two hours in which we will stop to adjourn at 9.09 p.m. The second work session will take place during the January 19th, 2021 meeting. I now call on Dr. Williams, Dr. Scriven, Mr. Saris, and Mr. Tana. Thank you. Dr. Williams? Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and Vice Chair and members of the board. Our team here is present tonight uh, to receive questions and any additional comments from the board during this first work session. Present, we have Dr. Scriven, 
Mr. Sarah's, um, Mr. Ten Leaf. So I will turn it over to them or to turn it over to board members if they have comments and questions for us to follow up. Ms. Gover, if you would do a roll call for the board members at this time. Ms. Scott? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Ms. Covey? Ms. Covey? Dr. Hager? Present. Ms. Joe? Hey, Brian. Present. Hello. Mr. Kuhn? Here. Ms. Mack? Present. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I uh, I just joined the meeting. Thank you. That's what we needed. So Ms. Pastor? Present. Ms. Rowe? Here. Mr. Mahomsa? Present. And Ms. Causey? Thank you. So good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, uh, members of Board of Education. Uh, we're joined here with Mr. Saris, uh, Mr. Tantliff, and uh, a host of uh, central office uh, Falcony and staff uh, to uh, take any questions that you may have pertaining to the proposed FY 2022 budget. Uh, so we to open it on uh, for any questions that you would like to pose. Uh, we recognize that there have been uh, questions that we received today uh, that we will work on responses uh, for, and we'll have the responses ready for you uh, at the next work session. Uh, but of course, uh, feel free uh, to answer any questions. If we cannot fill them uh, right here this evening, we will definitely make sure that we address them uh, during our next uh, opportunity. So at this time, Madam Chair, I'll turn it over to you. And I'm not sure how you want to facilitate opening the floor uh, for any board members who, who may have questions at this time. Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Uh, could you please? Um, so for board members, um, because we can't see who's there, if you could state your name and your question or your statement um, so we know who's speaking, that would be wonderful. Sure. This is Vice Chair Hen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to begin with a motion. I move that the board direct the superintendent to provide a complete budget book for FY22 FY 2022, providing all subject matter, graphs, charts, data, explanations, content, and information with the same format as was contained in the FY 2021 budget book, having been updated with the current information for this budget cycle, and that the board adjourn this meeting to such a time as the complete budget book has been supplied to the board and the public, at which time budget work sessions may resume. Second row. Was that a second from Ms. Rowe? We couldn't quite hear you. Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Second row. Okay. Thank you. May I speak to my motion, Madam Chair? Yes, you may. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the, the current operating budget book being provided. However, it does not contain the same comprehensive information that the board needs to deliberate. 
Um, much of the content already exists from previous year's budget books, and it's simply amended annually with the current year's financial data. Um, information in previous sections, such as the organizational section, outlining the operations and capital budget processes, information on general fund requests for offices, um, department budgets, information on school budget details um, that are usually highlighted, such as staffing allocations, special education staffing, magnet programs allocations, and other programs allocations. Um, these are just a few examples of information that has been provided to the board previously and is very helpful in evaluating the budget proposal. So my motion um, aims to provide the board with the same information that we've received previously in order for us to consider and make an informed evaluation on the $1.6 billion in general fund expenditures. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for that, um, Vice Chair Hen. Um, my question, and I'll start with that, would be as far as for Dr. Williams, um, what is the feasibility and turnaround of Ms. Hen's request? I can take that if you'd like, Dr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Ms. Hen, uh, what we were challenged with this year is because of the ransomware attack, our performance budgeting system <clears throat> was taken completely offline and out of the picture, as was all the data that's contained in that system, which is the entire budget book, basically. So uh, once we understood the implications of the attack, and where we were at, we had a couple of weeks to pull the budget together and make sure it ticked and tied and reconciled. Um, we were able to do that with data that we had pulled down in reports previously, but all of the pages that you see in the budget book are based on reports that we've set up within the performance budgeting system. So the budget book uh, you received, which is absolutely correct from a bottom line standpoint was what we had the ability to put together with the data we were able to recover from spreadsheets, um, et cetera, uh, and to have it in time for last week's board meeting. We, uh, we, so there, there would be no possible way to uh, provide a full budget book um, in the next week. And even the pages you refer to, Right. If it was tomorrow, we would have to retype all of those pages because all of those documents are contained within uh, the budget system. Now we can take PDFs and convert them, but it, it's all uh, quite a bit of time to do that. So uh, what we could do for next week's meeting is the uh, all the, the prior year comparisons by office that you were describing. We could pull all of that down into an Excel uh, worksheet. It wouldn't be, and you'd be able to see by office what the change was this, you know, 22 versus 21, but we wouldn't be able to put it into the same page format um, that you're used to seeing. It, it would take us, uh, if we started today, it would take us uh, several weeks to pull that together if we could. Um, we're hoping to get the performance budgeting system back in the next several weeks. Um, and our original plan as it stood was to have a full budget book, which I know would not at all help you for your deliberations, but by the end of the budget cycle. But in any case, we could provide the data that you need, I believe, for next week, depending on, on what it specifically you ask for. But again, if it if it's the office comparisons, we could provide that to you in an, in an easy to understand spreadsheet, but it wouldn't be all the, the back pages that you have from the book. Right now, the budget book basically summarizes each chief, but then does not have all the details by office because again, it was just absolutely not feasible with what we were faced with to pull that together for uh, last week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tantleff. Um, that is very helpful. The, the two pieces of content in my motion that are the most critical, and you, you did focus on those in your response, so thank you, um, would be the school details and the department level details. So those are the, um, the two pieces of data, at least, that I found to be the most critical um, 
in, in terms of gaps in what we've received um, versus what we normally receive. So the motion is quite comprehensive. However, I leave it to the board to, um, if they wish to amend the motion, um, again, looking to receive what we had previously received. And I, I do appreciate the work that has gone into producing what we did receive. So um, thank you. And that is no small feat, I'm sure. So thank you for that background and that explanation. However, um, thank you for also appreciating the board's um, task ahead of us and trying to um, muster Thank through. you, Ms. Penn. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Mr. Offerman. So uh, I will. There is a motion on the floor. And a second. Uh, yes, but we're, um, and the people have questions apparently about the motion. Uh, this is more of a statement. I uh, I will not be supporting this motion given what we given what we just heard. As we've asked our teachers and students to do, I, I expect board members to be to be able to do the best they can do given 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 the current conditions. And I believe the staff members are trying their best in order to provide that with us given the limited time frame that we have. This is only my comment up of about the about the motion. I do have questions or concerns I'll express later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Next, we have Mr. Mahomza. Yes, good evening. Um, you mentioned that a full board packet will take weeks. Approximately how long would it take? Just wondering. Could you repeat the question? I, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, can you hear me now? A, a little better. OK, I said um, that you mentioned that to type out a full uh, uh, budget uh, book. It will take a couple weeks. Approximately how long would that be? Just wondering. Um, I'm not sure we could produce the entire book, mm -hmm. um, but if, if we were uh, directed to, to do that, um, two to three weeks of continuous work. Um, but I would have to work it out with with my staff if we were literally going to try to produce that whole book. There's probably some pieces of it. Um, well, yeah, it would, it would be several weeks, I would say. So so thank you. Yeah. Mr. Tan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tanliff. This is Dr. Williams again. Um, the system is still in the midst of recovery repair. Um, and we're working on several um, systems. Um, so, as you can see, we, we are unable to give a time frame um, as Mr. Tanleaf just described, um, but if that's the direction of the board, uh, we would provide updates in terms of the status of where we are uh, to then, if I understood the motion, then to be able to give uh, some concrete information as we go through that process if this motion passes. Yeah, um, thank you, Dr. Williams. I, I, in any uh, normal circumstance, I would uh, hands down support this motion. I think I'm, um, I'm a proponent for fiscal oversight, um, looking over what the school system's doing. But I do, I, I cannot be oblivious to all the events that have occurred this past couple of months. And looking at, the, um, the schedule of the budget right now. I just I just foresee if us stalling for us to wait weeks to even start the discussions, then present that to the county, then present to the council and all that. Um, how, how long that process is going to take is the, Dr. Williams. Is there a possibility we might not even pass this budget before uh, I believe the January 1st? That's when the budget we're supposed to get the funds. So the budget so needs before. to go to the county executive by March 1st. March 1st. So uh, what, what, I guess what I'm saying is if it, it's going to take you weeks to get this budget book together and we are probably going to, if this motion passes and then we have to wait week, uh, like at the time you present the budget, is it possible we might not even meet that deadline? Meaning all the other deadlines might get pushed back. So what we presented tonight um, in working hey. with 
I'm sorry, in working and working and what we presented tonight um, is the minimum regarding the budget. Um, and again, as Mr. Tenley described, um, because of our circumstances, we did not have all the details. Um, one, not having access to all the details or the staff to recreate all of the detailed information. Um, but what we have here is, is meeting the expectations of, of a budget. Um, and we do have that time frame to submit the budget as Mr. Tanley described. Um, so that's all we know at this point, Mr. Mahamza, about the timelines in which the budget is due to our county partner. Uh, no, I, just, I was wondering if you can answer um, if we were to wait uh, weeks to start the discussion. Um, what if we don't meet those deadlines? Um, can we still submit the budget? Could the funds come later? There's no flexibility in the state law, which requires that budget to be submitted by March 1st. Sorry, could you repeat that again? You, you broke up a little bit. Yes, there is no flexibility in the state law, which requires that the budget be submitted by March 1st. Okay, thank and you. And I think that without, uh, and our, our budget system is not completely restored yet. Um, and if we put staff to work trying to recreate that document manually uh, there there will be difficulty doing the things that we normally do during the budget process which is answer dozens of questions um, we've already today just received the first couple dozen um, and by compressing uh, the time that we have left uh, it still may not meet the board's uh, desired goal of having this full discussion um, with the with a full document as a starting point just because we we have spent uh, weeks just in discussion once we have a com a standard and complete document Okay, thank you. I appreciate the um, answer, the answers to my question. Um, I'll, I'm happy. I'll be happy if you can provide as much um, more information that um, I believe you mentioned uh, that could probably address Ms. Uh, Hen's concerns, and I'm sure other board members want that information. But I just really don't want us to delay uh, the budget that's going to affect our students and our teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahomsa. Next, we have Ms. Mass. Um, yes, um, I would wholeheartedly support Ms. Hen's motion. Um, I take the budget very seriously. And when I think that we're representing over 111,000 students, teachers, staff, and schoolhouses, I think it is incumbent upon us to do our due diligence to look at every dollar allocated. And the book that has been provided to other board members that I have not even received does not provide enough information. And I'd also like to point out that last year in the agenda that was provided for budget, um, the whole budget cycle, 225 was the date allocated for board voting on the FY21 board proposed operating budget. So I would um, submit that there is a little wiggle room in this timeline that would still allow us to meet the March 1st date. And again, I think all of us, it, it is incumbent upon us to do what needs to be done to ensure that our students, our teachers, our administrators have what they need to make education successful. So I would support Ms. Hen's motion. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Uh, next we have Ms. Jose. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, some of my questions were asked by Mr. Mahomes, so thank you. Um, you know, I work on budgets and I think people tend to forget that we're in the middle of a pandemic, a global unprecedented pandemic, 
and we're recovering from a ransomware. The budget is one of the most important things the board approves. And this is the third budget cycle we're going through. And, and this seems like a very unthoughtful motion. I, I, I would certainly would like to sit here uh, to this work session and listen to staff. Um, this budget, this motion is really preposterous. And, you know, in all the politicking board members are forgetting that this is a budget tied to livelihoods and children. I don't want to keep pushing this can down the road and missing the deadline when it's due to the county executive. So I will not be supporting this motion. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Next, we have Ms. Rowe. Yes, um, I would just like to speak to my second. Aside from hiring a superintendent, deliberating on and approving the Board of Education's operating budget is the most important thing the board does. It is not possible to formulate the questions we usually would without the complete information in the book presented in an understandable way. As the budget is due March 1st and the current schedule gives us four weeks padding, I see no reason why the school system cannot prioritize operational needs concerning this budget in the ransomware recovery and ask the local and state governments for whatever help is needed to comply with this directive. And so I fully support it. And without all the, rec all the information that we need to properly deliberate, I will not be able to support any budget. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Next, we have Ms. Causey. Uh, Ms. Causey. Doc, excuse me, Dr. Hager may go before me. Okay, yes, Dr. Hager. Hi, everyone. Um, so this is my first uh, budget season, and I've been trying to do my homework and understand kind of how to best approach this. And I, too, have not even yet received this budget book. Um, in, through, I know that there are this is an unprecedented time for many reasons, including mail delays and our cyber attack and so many things have happened. Um, so my question is, is there a precedent for adjusting? Well, I, I recognize that the, the March 1st date is a hard end date, but um, what would it take to add a, an additional work session once we get the additional information? I'm just very concerned about waiting until next week to get this information in the Excel, Excel spreadsheets are fine with me, um, but getting that information and then not having enough time to really digest it and ask questions about it. Well, I just want to reiterate that the documents are all online. I know that we we mail these, but I thought we had also provided electronic versions to the board as well as posting them online is ha, has anyone not been able to find them in that way no i've been accessing it online it's um there's some complicating er issues with, with my the computer that i was given but I've, I've been working it out um online but things like this sometimes are, are nice to have in, in your hands and i it it was mailed but not received so okay thank you so is there a precedent for adjusting the the schedule with the school board? Um, I know uh, Ms. Mack mentioned that last time we met through February about the budget. That's correct. So, uh, this year, the board established the schedule that we have. Uh, we can uh, meet throughout the month of February uh, as well, uh, subject to the time that the board has available. Thank you. Okay, and um, we have Ms. Causey. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too am concerned about the uh, level of information that we've received. I, of course, understand the implications of the COVID pandemic, but more importantly to this situation currently is our ransomware attack. Uh, my question is, Has uh, have resources been requested from the county executive and the state? I know that there were uh, correspondence from the county executive that they have uh, staff willing and uh, able to help us. So I'm questioning, Have has the county executive uh, been requested for staff to assist you? Um, or the Maryland Emergency Management Association who was uh, involved earlier. Uh, it's it's not a question of assistance. Uh, 
it's a question of of rebuilding our our systems and our database and that is progressing uh, very well uh, it's just that it's uh, it's only at the at the early stage and it doesn't conveniently align the recovery process doesn't conveniently align with the January February time frame in which we're working on the budget so I don't believe there are any outside resources uh, that could speed that process along so you're indicating that there are no outside resources supporting our staff in recovering from the ransom attack? Well, Ms. Causey, that was not the response from Mr. Saris. He was referring to the building of the budget and having information to build the budget, not about our partnership with outside resources. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, So again, I guess the, the the question that I don't see that was answered is: Has uh, assistance been requested from the county executive? I know they have budget auditors that work on our budgets every year, and in project management, if you have a large project, if you have additional hands, then that can shorten the time. Thank you for that question, Ms. Causey. As Mr. Sarah said. Um, it's it's not about the support it's about the information that um we don't have all of the information at this time i think i think mr saris did a nice job in answering that question okay thank you thank you um and we haven't heard from mr coon hi good evening thank you Ms. scott um, Mr. Saris and Dr. Williams, um, I'm curious, is the document that was provided, the proposed budget, I literally just received mine at this afternoon, um, uh, my paper version, which I appreciate because I like to be able to make notes and flip back and forth. Um, is your expectation that this is what you're going to hand the county and they're going to they're going to accept that without any more detail? Um, I could take that one, George. Well, uh, it it more than meets the minimum requirements that the county will need, and and what the county needs is uh, an appropriation for the thirteen units or activities that MSDE uh, th that are contained in MSDE's chart of accounts. So um, basically uh, the minimum standard would be a list of revenues and a summary of expenditures okay. uh, in order Thank to you. meet it, it sounds the like minimum it needs, requirement. It meets their needs, correct? And I guess my, my follow on question would be, were you, was this, is this all you're gonna provide? Do you expect to expand on it before then? I know we're asking for you to, but, but what was your expectation as a team? Cause you're, working on lots of things with the ransomware issue and trying to recover from that. But are you are you just going is, is the is the current plan to take what we've been provided and and go forward with that and that's it. Our our plan is to expand on this as much as possible uh, before February 28. But uh, and so, but I can't give you a specific uh, goal or a specific deadline by which we are going to be able to provide different segments of the document at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. And next we have, uh, let's see, we have um, Ms. Pastor. Thank you, Ms. Scott. I just need some clarification in in the motion, and, and maybe I'm piggybacking on, on Mr. Kuhn's question. I, I'm, Kuhn's question, I'm not sure. 
Are we being asked <clears throat> to move this document that we have along as is without further discussion? I'll just stop with that question first. I feel like I've, I'm missing something here. What are we doing here? Anyone? So, Mr. Saris. So, I, I'm, I, are we speaking to the motion? Because I'm not, yeah, I, I, I don't want to respond to I that. Julia, I well, I, I'm speaking to the motion because maybe I need to hear the motion again after the discussions or the discussion that we've had. Maybe I need to hear it again. Sure. Ms. Pester, would you like me to repeat the motion? Sure, thank you. Thank you. I move that the board direct the superintendent to provide a complete budget book for FY 2022, providing all subject matter, graphs, charts, data, explanations, content, and information with the same format as was contained in the FY 2021 budget book having been updated with the current information for this budget cycle and that the board adjourn this meeting to such a time as the complete budget book has been supplied to the board and public at which time budget work sessions may resume. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Mr. Saris, yes, I am speaking to the motion. Um, I I hear what Ms. Hen, Hen is saying. I guess uh, the only piece uh, that I can I readily disagree with is postponing this. I know that there's some people who haven't read. I do need this piece of paper. I needed the paper. I'm not good at doing this looking online. So I have been feverishly poring over this, asking questions and doing background so that I can make comments. And, and because I have mine, I do have comments. I just wanted to hear tonight some of the thinking. So Ms. Hen, you see why I just have a problem with that last piece. I'm not ready to to adjourn, you know, until a later time for the discussion. I'm asking whether in that motion are we saying that there will be no discussion tonight, I guess, and that we're just, as I think Mr. Kuhn was saying, that we're just asking um, if we don't, if Miss Hens doesn't pass, that we just move it along. I don't need a bell. I, I yeah, want to so, Yes, Miss Hen, if you could answer that, please. Thank you. And the intent of that is to be respectful of everyone's time, Miss Pestier. So in light of um, needing to add an additional work session or reschedule this work session, this um, proposes to adjourn tonight until we have a complete budget book so that we are all prepared with a printed complete budget book mm -hmm. from which to ask our questions. Some of us have printed copies, some do not. Um, none of us have the complete book. So the, the goal is to be respectful of everyone's time and not to ask for more time than has already been taken up when not all of us have printed copies, none of us have the complete version, and that was the intent. So I hope that answers your question. It, it, Next we have Ms. Rowe. Yeah. Well, yeah, let me finish. Uh, Wait, thank you, Ms. Han. Let me just get my thank you out, please. Ms. Rowe. Yes, I would like to ask Mr. Saris approximately how many staff hours for both ransomware recovery and completion of the book are necessary to give us a complete book? Um, well, I'll let Mr. I apologize because I'm having I, technical difficulties. I'll let Mr. Tantliff provide the details, but um, I think. Hey, George. Yes. George, if I could just interject, and I'm, I'm having technical difficulties, so I hope you can hear me. Row and, and board, 
it, it's not about the manpower or the hours. It's about the availability. And I believe that's where the disconnect lies. If we had access to all of the data which we need, you would have had a full book. We can, in a different format, try to provide the school detail, but we still cannot give you what we don't have access to. Hence lies the problem and where we're diligently working to try to recreate those specific items that would need to be a part of this document. So I, I hope that that adds some clarity. Um, we can't create what we don't have. So are you saying that we will never have the budget book format back regardless of how many staff hours are poured into ransomware recovery? That the data is just gone and we'll never have it back? In which case, why not, not have creating it now? I mean, isn't everything HR hours? Regardless really of staff hours. That, that's correct. We do not have access to the data. So how many staff hours will it take to get that back? Access to the data? And the abbreviated version. So, so Dr. And Scriven, I know I'm fading in and out. Dr. Scriven, you're breaking up. Miss, Miss Rowe, in terms of, of hours, um, as Mr. Tanlith described, um, we don't know exactly what that would look like in order to get the current book to look like the previous book with the understanding that we may not have access to all of the data. So in terms of the hours, um, I don't know, we don't know. That's something that we can explore um, since this motion has been put on the floor. So I would just like to use the remainder of my time to say that we have the Office of Internal Audit, the County Council Auditor's Office, the County Executive's Auditor's Office, and any state um, availability of man hours to help us. And I support this motion because we do in fact have those resources. And as we're using those resources to cut paychecks, I think we should use those resources for deliberating on a proper budget. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Uh, next, it looks like we have Dr. Hager. Thank you. Um, so specific to this motion, um, I I do think I need more information with the budget. I've, I've been trying again to, to compare the 100 page document to the 300 page document from before and, and tease out kind of what's missing because this is kind of new to me and I am trying trying to do my best to, to really wrap my head around everything. Um, so I think more information would be great and an additional work session would be great. I am also not opposed to starting the conversation tonight. So um, without an amendment, I don't know that I would support, su support this motion, but I'm hoping that perhaps an additional motion would be made um, mm -hmm. or if it's, it's appropriate to amend this motion, um, then I would do so. But we, I do think we need that additional information to make this decision and one additional work session in the middle mm -hmm. of a larger board meeting, I don't think it's gonna be enough to really kind of tease out uh, the questions and answers that we have for this enormous budget. So I guess that, that's just my comment for now. Thanks. Ms. Scott, I'd like to say something, Rod McMillian. Oh, yes. If it's okay, Mr. McMillian has not spoken. Um, so yes, please go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Okay, I'm trying to come to grips with this reconstruction of the budget process. Uh, I've heard the term recovery a few times. Is it correct that we do not have a backup of last year's budget? Well, um, I, I don't know that I followed your question exactly. Last year's budget, the, the uh, electronic, if the question is, do we have all the electronic forms that went into last year's budget? Uh, the answer is no, we don't have them because all of the data on our shared drives were lost, as was our performance budgeting system. So to put this budget book together, we were able to recover spreadsheets that we had been uh, sharing that had been uh, included the final data 
uh, because right after Thanksgiving, we, we would have uh, gone hard and were ready to pull everything uh, together. So um, some other questions were asked about the system. At some point, when we do get the system back, um, if we had to recreate all the data that went into it, uh, we would. It just you know can't be done uh, quickly. We would need time to do that to send it. Th and it's and I don't know when we'll get our performance budgeting uh, system back. Uh, that's why I mentioned most of the data that's missing from the book. If you look at it, is the office details behind each chief. Right now, if you look through the book, you'll see the activity summaries by chief and it'll show the totals for their offices, we could in Excel pull into a pivot table in a format that you would be able to un understand the data. There wouldn't be explanations and write-ups. It wouldn't uh, be uh, laid out in a Word document, but we could, all the data that you see in the old budget book, we could pull most of it together into an Excel worksheet. And that's really uh, the data that's missing. That's really what we didn't have time or easy access to pull together and then put and recreate Word pages and, and publishing and documents. That stuff all takes a lot of time and it was all done and ready to go. I hope, um, Mr. McMillian, that answered your question. Well, I'm, I'm just still confused with all those words. Okay, sorry. That's okay, and I'm, I'm not being critical of you. I'm not being difficult. I just I'm trying to understand this process. So, so we do not have an electronic backup of last year's budget. Therefore, we have to reconstruct the process. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, the document that's online is that document identical to the 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 copies that some of us received? Yes, I believe Tracy mailed the hard copies on Friday and the electronic copy that is identical and online went up after the board meeting last week. Okay, thank you. And then I want to say this, there appears to be an out, a push outside BCPS and the Board of Education to, to gain more oversight into our budgetary process. I think we need to give as much detail as we can to help try to alleviate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So, McMillian. Sorry, did you have a response, uh, uh, Dr. Williams? Yes, Madam Chair, I just wanted to, to add a few points uh, since Do Mr. McMillian raised this question, um, that uh, BCPS is completely transparent and always has been with Baltimore County government with the county auditor's office. Uh, they, they have access to everything that goes into our budget be before, as it's created and after it's created. Uh, we provide volumes of data to them. We always have. Uh, we're just at a point now where uh, that data is not entirely accessible uh, or uh, easily transmitted. So uh, we. I just want to point out that Baltimore County government and BCPS use the same external audit company. Uh, all of our financial statements are are public, um, and there's never been a question about uh, sharing all of our budget data with 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 all branches of county government. And we would be doing that uh, right now. Uh, and we have shared the data that we do have with them. So we're in constant communication and, and anything that we have, uh, we immediately share with county government. Thank you. Uh, next we have Ms. Jose. 
Thank you, Ms. Scott. And you know, you don't have to answer my question. Ms. Scott, as a board chair, were you aware that your wife's chair was going to make this motion to adjourn the meeting? And my concern is with the time limit. And Mr. Sarris, I understand that you know when you're doing a budget, this is not something you're just bringing at the last minute. This is reviewed by the county, not just the county, but also the state. And you are very thoroughly audited. So I, I hate the constant dog whistle of uh, accountability. We've spent an hour just discussing this motion, which is still not clear. And I don't want to come to the next session. and Board members will make motions without having time to research. For example, Ms. Mack last year made a motion to remove the SERS database even though she got all of the questions and, and it passed and you know we were inundated by emails from uh, teachers and librarians and I had to take time off to go visit Kenwood and see how the SERS research database was used and I was going to overturn that motion at the next board meeting. We had the time to do that so you know making half-baked changes to the budget in the nth hour and not having term these are decisions that have long-term effects so Ms. Hen just submitted a whole bunch of I think 26 questions that I read through this uh, afternoon this would have been a good time to ask those questions. So I cannot in good conscience grandstand here and vote for this because I would like to ask questions and I would like to you know, use this time. Thank you, Ms. Jones. And I can answer your question. No, I was not aware of this motion prior to it coming public um, today, but thank you for that. Next we have Ms. Causey. Thank you, and I had asked how much time do I have left? 45 seconds. <laughs> thank you. First, I wanted to say thank you um, to board members and uh, Dr. Williams and staff. I think this has been a very helpful conversation for the board to understand uh, the impacts of the ransomware attack. Um, I have been um, asking questions about that and have not gotten uh, what I feel is sufficient information to understand the ransomware impacts um, and the costs and the plan for recovery. So it does seem like there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And I would again encourage um, asking um, our local and state partners for assistance. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I would say is that um, I've been reading through what we have so far. And one of the biggest concerns that's been raised by TABCO um, among many concerns is the paying for the extra 15 minutes. Is that in the budget? No, it's we that is not in the budget. OK, Thank was you, it, Ms. Palsy. And next we have Ms. Lisa Mack. Um, yes, I wanted to follow up to Mr. Kuhn's question to Mr. Saris in response to a question that Mr. Kuhn asked. Mr. Saris said that his plan is to expand on this book as much as possible before February 28th when it is submitted to the county on March 1st. And I just wanted to say that I believe that we, the board, are as important as the county, and whatever efforts are made to create a more robust book should be made on behalf of the board as well as the county. Thank you. Period. You cannot vote on anything relating to the budget, period, because it seems to be late, period. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think we've had a robust conversation, so I would move the question, um, or I would call the question um, so that we could vote on this. Is there a second? Second, Hofferman. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Gover, if we could do a roll call vote on um, the question. Madam Chair, I would like to divide the question. Well, there's already a uh, motion on the floor. Well, I've already moved the question, so we need to vote on that. Ms. Gover, could we do a roll call vote, please? Yes, Ms. Rowe. No. Ms. Causey? No. Ms. Mack? No. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Jost? No. Ms. Hen? No. Mr. Mahomza? No. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Pester? No. Mr. Kuhn? No. Dr. Hager? No. Ms. Scott? Yes. Favors two. 
Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion to divide the question and I would request that Ms. Hen read the two, I would ask her to repeat them, the two separate <coughs> portions of her motion. Thank you, Mrs. Pauzy. Um, I move that the board direct the superintendent to provide a complete budget book for FY 2022, providing all subject matter graphs, charts, data, explanations, content, and information with the same format as was contained in the FY 2021 budget book, having been updated with the current information for this budget cycle. That is the first um, part of my motion. The second is that the board adjourn this meeting to such a time as the complete budget book has been supplied to the board and the public at which time budget work sessions may resume. Was there a second? There doesn't need to be a second to divide the question, but I was the second on the original motion. You were the second on the original motion, okay. Okay, so then now we would, there's, you're dividing there's it. No so vote vote on, on, yeah, there's no vote on dividing the question. Once someone requests the chair to do that, the chair does it. Yeah, so that, no, that was that was the I, previous manager. That was the previous motion that just failed. So it does need a second. No, it wasn't. The previous motion. motion that just failed was calling the question, which means we stop debate and vote. The okay. current um, yeah, we called the, is all right, to sorry, all right, the question. Me. We called the question right, so that the, failed. So now um, Ms. Hen um, read the motion as Ms. Palsy asked to divide, uh, excuse me, read the motion and it was asked to be divided. Correct. Is everybody under, is everybody on the same page? Yeah, so which motion are we processing? The first one. So now that we're, we're going to our, our next part. So um, we can process the first one. Um, and Ms. Han, if you could, so that since they've been divided, could you read the first one so that we can process that and vote on that? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. I move that the board direct the superintendent to provide a complete budget book for FY 2022 providing all subject matter, graphs, charts, data, explanations, content, and information with the same format as was contained in the FY 2021 budget book, having been updated with the current information for this budget cycle. Okay, so now Ms. Gilbert, could we do a roll call vote on that? It, is it possible to make an amendment to that motion or is it too late? Yes, it's possible to make an amendment. What amendment would you like to add to that? Could we amend it so such that the language complete budget book is not used, but instead, um, and I may need help with the language, but those uh, specific spreadsheets that would be in place of the of the kind of more thorough written content would be provided to us within the next week. Again, that was poorly worded. <laughs> so to address that that general concern. Ms. Hen, do you accept that amendment? It, that that would need to be motion to amend would need to be voted on. Okay. So, Ms. Dr. Hager, you could make the motion to amend. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, I may need help with, with that language, but to uh, modify proposed language. I would love that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I propose language to move to amend the current motion that instead of the language complete budget book, that we change the language to as complete as is possible. That that sounds good to me. Okay, is there a second? I second the amendment. Okay. I second the amendment. That was uh, Ms. Rowe. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Um, Ms. Hen, do you accept the amendment? Yes. We have to vote on the amendment. It, it, it still needs to be voted on. We still have to vote so on it. So now we, yeah, I'm going through the, going through the process. Um, so now if we could vote <laughs> on, so which are we voting on first, the amendment or the motion? We vote the on amendment. the amendment. Okay, so now uh, Ms. Gover, if we could take the roll call to vote on Dr. Hager's amendment. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Mahamza? Yes. I don't believe Mr. Mr. Offerman? Yes. 
Mr. Bursades, can you provide counsel for Ms. Ro uh, Ms. Rose's concern? Can I take uh, the point of yes, the, the, the student member of the board uh, per statute can vote on all matters and the statute says except those relating to among other things capital and operating budgets and while this isn't about the uh, the line items in the budget it uh, relates to the budget uh, so unfortunately I don't believe the student member could vote on this motion okay thank you for that Mr. Mercedes and thank you Ms. Rowe for bringing that up Mr. Offerman Yes. Ms. Pester? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And now um, we are voting on the motion. And um, Ms. As amended, yes. And Ms. Ro um, excuse me, not Ms. Rowe, Ms. Hen, would you mind reading it one more time? Sure. I move that the board direct the superintendent to provide as complete as possible a budget book for FY 2022, providing all subject matter, graphs, charts, data, explanations, content, and information with the same format as was contained in the FY 2021 budget book, having been updated with the current information for this budget cycle. Thank you. OK, Ms. Gover, could we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rao? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Joe? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Pester? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Okay, and now if we could hear the second um, motion that was divided out, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I move that the board adjourn this meeting to such a time as the complete budget book has been supplied to the board and the public, at which time budget work sessions may resume. Okay, Ms. Scott, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Joes. It's a very vague motion. When you say such a time, it could be any time and the budget is due March 1st. We need a, a date because people have work to do. I can't just come at the nth hour for a 10 hour long marathon session for a work um, budget. It's unacceptable and I will speak very strongly against it in the press if I have to because this kind of thing springing at the last minute is, is totally unacceptable for the 25th largest school district. Ms. Jones, are you offering an amendment? This is not my motion, so I I would like to hear from staff. What is a doable date? How can we adjust uh, work sessions in there to ask questions? And I don't want nth last minute sessions. People come in with Santa's list and then I don't have time to make intelligent decisions on bu budget decisions that have a long term repercussions on students, on children, on, on teachers, on staff. And so I've, I'm not going to do that. This is third year in the row and I refuse to be forced into that again. So I need a timeline from staff. What is reasonable? What's doable? Because I'm not an unreasonable person. As staff can tell you, Mr. Sarris, you know I love you. <laughs> so right. you know, give me a reasonable time. Thank you. Could staff please um, answer Ms. Joseph's question as to a reasonable time, a uh, turnaround time for this amendment for what Ms. Hen is um, proposing? Well, the term, the the motion said as complete as possible. Um, I think it would take our staff about a month to produce something close to the FY21 document. Um, so, but the term as complete as possible means we would uh, produce something that would uh, be ready for the board's meetings, uh, which are currently February uh, 
9th Nine. and February uh, 23rd. So um, we would make any, uh, we would we would scale it back to meet those two dates, which are currently on the schedule. Um, if I might add uh, also, uh, putting the book in the current, you know, in the format you're used to, recreating all the pages and the explanations, that's what will take lots of time, but it won't necessarily add a lot of information versus us providing you uh, spreadsheets, uh, which we could do within a week, we believe, that have all the data that's missing from the book. And, and I would just also mention as a, as a one other factor, because of the situation with the budget, there really aren't um, many new initiatives this year that fall into each office. So most of the office changes are going to be very basic in terms of some planned compensation. OK, thank you. Um, Ms. Qualley has a question. Are you there? Thank, thank, you, you, there. Chair. thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I, I had the question. And, um, my understanding would be that the Kathleen, you have a lot of feedback. Did someone mute? OK. Is it, <clears throat> um, uh, my expectation would be that the board, based on the comments that we heard uh, and the first vote, that the board would receive all of the information that will go to the county. Is is that what you're talking about, Mr. Tantliff, being available in a week? Um, well, Ms. Causey, I think uh, Mr. Saris mentioned it before. The county uh, legally only needs our by activity roll up. So uh, last year when the second work session um, or when the vote was the second meeting in February, uh, we did not provide the board proposed budget book to the county by March 1st. We gave them electronic roll ups of the data um, and then they got an actual budget book when when you did. Um, what Mr. Saris also mentioned is they're all, they're asking us questions as they come up on the details of the budget. So what they're required to receive is literally like a, a very brief one page summary. So uh, right now they would if we did nothing else, they would get the budget book. Um, if the board, uh, depending on how this uh, pans out, if we provide you with spreadsheets, that show the office changes from year to year. They would obviously receive that, but they would not um, request a budget book on top of that. that. That would not be a requirement they would ask of us or is legally required. Well, so Mr. Saris just commented that staff provides volumes of data to the county. So my expectation as a board member in order to properly um, pass a budget to the county is that the board would have to receive prior all of the data that will go to the county. And I and I will say, as I've been on the board for a long time and dealt with this budget for a long time, it all matters. All of it matters, especially in the pandemic um, and now with the ransomware attack. There are things that we're paying for. Um, there's areas where we're not using funds as they were anticipated. We have additional ransomware attack uh, requirements of which the board has not been apprised an estimate of what that's going to be. Um, and that needs to be figured out uh, because that has impacts this year and next year um, as we try and find money for the needs of our um, students and for the be able to support the teachers and all of the staff, um, central office, schoolhouse, resources, um, to support the teachers in providing the education for our children. This year is more mission critical than any other year in history. 
So we will need more information, not less. And I think the county will agree. Thank you, Ms. Paul. Uh, uh, Dr. Hager, um, I think you the question. I'm sorry. Did someone say Madam something? Chair, I raise a point of order and ask yes. the chair to ask speakers to keep their comments related to the motion and the question at hand, which is to adjourn the meeting until we receive a book, a completed okay. book. As the previous. Certainly, yes. Dr. Hager is next. Go ahead, Dr. Hager. I did not. I, I'm not in line to ask a question. Okay. Um. Then next, it looks like we had Ms. Hen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, ask a question and clarify that the motion is, sorry, let me refer my, back to my notes, a comment that Mr. Saris had made about the requirements on the book itself. And, and this runs contrary to what Ms. Rowe had just said. So I, I apologize if this is out of order, but the, the board is asking about the schedule for producing a book as close to pos as possible as the FY 2021 book and the schedule for that, not for um, the book to be adjusted to meet the board's current schedule. So I did want to clarify that that was our intent, not for the final product to be adjusted to meet our schedule because our schedule is less important than getting the information. The focus of the motion is to get an end product that is as close as possible to what we've been receiving in terms of content. Um, I don't think anyone is as concerned as with formatting as we are information. So I did want to clarify that um, and see if there were any questions to that to make sure that we are all on the same page. Okay. Um, Ms. Hen, could you please repeat your motion um, so that we could take a vote on that, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I move that the board adjourn this meeting to such a time as the complete budget book has been supplied to the board and the public, at which time budget work sessions may resume. Thank you for that. Um, Mr. Offerman, you have a question? It's actually a comment. I, I think we need to fix, given that we are required to give the county information on March 1st, I believe we need to have a fixed date by which whatever condition that the book is available to us uh, would allow us to make the best decision, best decision that we can at that time. Uh, I, I don't think an, I don't think an open-ended motion is uh, is uh, in terms of time is uh, is uh, is very practical. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Um, May we, uh, Ms. Gilbert, may we have a roll call vote, please, on Ms. Hen's motion? Ms. Rao? Yes. Ms. Clausey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Jones? Abstain. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Offerman? No. Ms. Pester? No. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Dr. Hager? No. Ms. Scott? No. Favor six. Can the chair okay. rule please on whether or not the student member is permitted to vote on this? Uh, Ms. Rowe, we couldn't quite understand you, but did you ask Mr. Brusades if the student member was permitted to vote on this? I asked, yeah, I asked the chair to rule on whether or not the student member is allowed to vote on this. It Mr. Brusades, I thought chair. you said that, sorry, go ahead. It's the providence of the chair to ask the parliamentarian for advice. So that's what I'm asking. Mr. Brusades, are you there? Uh, yes, and as previously stated, uh, the student member is not permitted to vote on matters relating to the capital or operating budgets, and this would seem to relate to it. So he would. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. M Madam Chair, may I ask a question, please? If that's the case, would would we still need seven votes or would six votes move the motion? I believe you still need a majority of the full board, which includes the student member. So you would need seven okay. votes to carry. Mr. Mercedes, I believe that okay, is Okay, so correct. therefore the motion the fails. Student member. When the student member doesn't vote on items, we only have ever required six votes. So the budget and other items the student member statutorily not permitted to vote on, the board then only needs six votes. That has always been the case for as long as I have ever watched this board, and it may or may not be actually articulated in statute. This okay. Is Mr. This is Mr. Offerman. I yes, would love. Offerman. I would like Mr. Mercedes, uh, 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 from what I understand, and, th and since he is our attorney, I would assume that we're going to follow uh, things in terms of what his legal interpretation is. Thank you. Yeah, that is correct. So, um, Mr. Mercedes, could you again give us your legal interpretation so that we can have clarification for all board members, please? Considering uh, Ms. Rowe's comment, uh, uh, th I think her point is well taken. If the student member isn't uh, permitted to to vote on it, then uh, as would have been would be the case in any other matter that he wouldn't be able to vote on, such as collective bargaining uh, or six two o twos. In those in those situations, six votes would carry. Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. So that 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 would apply in this situation. So six votes would carry. But my understanding is, is we are a body of 12, so it would be seven votes to carry, um, even though the student member is not permitted to vote. It, it would be. Six out of 11. Mr. So then I guess I would ask a question. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. What about when there was a, a vacancy? And um, it was still uh, the majority. Um, it, it, it still required the seven votes to carry. The student members allowed to vote on leadership. OK, um, I believe I cut somebody off. Um, who was about to ask a question? Was that Ms. Jones? You asked my question. Thank you, Ms. Khan. I was wondering because it looks like Mr. Mercedes flip flopped. If we could have um, Miss, if Miss Howie was in there to clarify, is Miss Howie on the call? That is Stephen Coles. I'm on the call. I do not recall which way it works with voting for these decisions when there are only eleven members that are allowed to vote. So I believe board council may be correct. I'm sorry, but I, 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 I can't hear what's being said. I can't hear you. Whoever that was you, speaking, you did you identify you. yourself? Yes, this is Stephen Coles sitting in for Miss Howie. And based on what Mr. Bersades and Miss Rove said, if there are only 11 eligible members, then it would be six, but I'm not sure that that's what board's policy says, but I'm not able. Obviously, I don't have access to the board policy to look at what it indicates at the time, so I don't know if that if it says seven votes to carry motions at all times. OK, so um, I'm to table the motion proceeds. to adjourn in order this to adjourn. OK, excuse so me, point of order, row, point to of adjourn. order row, excuse me, point of order um, so that we have a definitive. Um, Mr. Mercedes, if you could um, cite the pol or yeah, cite the policy. Madam Chair, this is Kathleen Causey. And yes, I just well, checked. I have I have a piece of information related to that. I um, had just checked with staff on the policy review committee related to uh, trying to schedule the next PRC meeting to make up for the past December meeting that was canceled due to the ransomware attack. 
Um, and she said that the uh, law office has not been able to restore all of the policies or regulations yet, so they are not currently available. Which you just consulted with policy, um, with legal staff just now? No, in the just the last couple days, I had an email exchange in trying to set up the next policy review committee meeting since we had to cancel the December meeting due to the ransomware attack. So it's a, it's an email that uh, they just. Okay. Uh, Thank you for that. Okay, so Mr. Mercedes, it's your opinion that um, because there are 11 voting members that um, it's six votes to carry the motion. Is that your opinion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay, so then in, in that case, in the. Ms. Yes, ma'am. Miss, who is that, Miss Joes? Yes, point of order. I mean, Mr. Mercedes just five minutes earlier said it was seven, and now he's. Uh, for me, I'm not comfortable, and I think you can probably challenge that legal ruling because is there a state law that says so? Uh, and you're right. We were very clear when it was a chairmanship that we had to have seven, and uh, it was a six to six tie, and de facto carried. So I'm not comfortable with this ruling by Mr. Mercedes. Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Hems. Yes, thank you. Um, the difference is, and I'm looking up the state statute to try to cite it now, the difference in the election of officers and budget votes is that the majority is determined by the voting membership, even when there's a vacancy. So the members, um, the voting membership when electing a board officer is out of 12 members, even when there's a vacancy. So seven votes are required. The voting membership on budget votes is 11 because the student member does, is not counted in the voting membership. That's why the voting membership is 11 and the majority is six. That is the difference. So Ms. Will and Mr. Mercedes are correct. And I'm looking up the statute that defines it. But that is the difference. OK, so that's the ruling from um, Mr. Brusades, and then also um, there was another person um, on the call who is sitting in for Ms. Howie, Mr. Cowles, who is in agreement with Mr. Brusades. OK, yes, Ms. Causey, you have a point of order. Yes, Madam Chair, I have a point of order for a uh, time sensitive request of Dr. Williams. Um, it's been pointed out to me that the parent survey um, that closes tomorrow, or excuse me, that <clears throat> closes on the 14th um, has not been widely shared with parents. I'm it sorry, does have operations. Point of order, we're discussing the, the work session. I mean, the, the operating but budget. We're, um, we're not yes, discussing I, I, yes, the we survey. Finish, so that's, can, not, that's not appropriate no, at this time. That's most I finish, I can not tell appropriate you if at I this can, time, Ms. Causey, okay. point of order. Thank we're you. trying Thank to you, discuss the operating budget. My... Excuse me, Ms. Causey, that's most inappropriate. That is not appropriate at this time. We are discussing the operating budget and we are also discussing um, uh, how we are going to go forward. So if Madam the Chair, question I apologize, varies but it does from, have operational excuse me, Ms. Causey, impact my word, excuse me. Out of order. My word, that is most inappropriate and out of order. Um, what Madam I Chair, would like to I do would just ask Mr. you to uh, um, uh, hear me completely before you this say that it's out of point order. Point of order. I must um, remind you again of behavior of a board member. This is most unbecoming and um, most unbecoming behavior of a board member. That is not appropriate at this point in time. So again, the motion carried, and according to our legal um, representation um, from um, Mr. Brusades, then. At that point in time, at this point in time, then um, unless we are we have additional questions um, or anything like that, then we would move to adjourn the meeting. Are there questions related to the operating budget? OK, Dr. Williams, then I would ask you as far as your staff, what is the turnaround time um, based on um, what has been discussed here and everything for board members to receive the workbook um, and the information that was discussed. Uh, we uh, good evening. We will work on providing as much information as possible 
for the upcoming uh, Board of Education work session regarding the, the uh, operating budget. So as Mr. Sayers shared, there are uh, <coughs> at least right now two additional work sessions, if I recall. We can re-examine re that schedule and amend uh, if necessary. But our goal is to have additional information uh, at the next work session um, as mentioned in the motion. Thank you. OK, and so our next work session as scheduled um, is and also I wanted to ask Dr. Williams so that members could please know um, what is the timeline for questions um, from members to be emailed to you and to staff so that we can make sure that we have an appropriate amount of time um, so that we can have our questions answered. The questions we received today were scheduled to be answered at the next at or before the next board work session. Um, we obviously now have additional assignments, which we uh, both of which we will try to complete to the best of our ability. OK, so is there a uh, time frame um, so that if members get you questions today, then it will be turned around in a week or I guess when could we expect to have the answers to those? I just would. The questions submitted uh, today or later will would be available um, uh, the week after. So we're preparing questions received today for January 19th. Any questions received thereafter would be for the next, the, either the week thereafter, the 26th, uh, or at the next uh, board meeting. Okay, thank you. And um, it looks like Ms. Mack, you have a question. You can go ahead and ask your question. Yes, thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, Mr. Saris, earlier you mentioned two dates. You said two additional work sessions. In the information I saw, um, I saw a work session on the 19th and then the board would be expected to take a vote on the 9th, I believe. Is there right. a work session that I'm missing in there? Nothing is currently scheduled other than than those. Then the 19th, J January 19th work session, the February 9th vote, uh, and the only other scheduled meeting would be for the 23rd at this point. January 19th work session, uh, that you mentioned the 23rd and, and what are you expecting to happen on the 23rd if we vote? Well, if we're still debating the budget on February 9th and the board, the board would then have to make a decision by February 23rd in order to meet the February, March 1st deadline to submit. So that, okay, that was the significance of the 23rd. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And Ms. Calls, you have a process question? Thank you, Madam Chair. In addressing the process issue with uh, work sessions that remain, I have a, que a legal question for Mr. Brusades. Um, first, I want to point out that, uh, Madam Chair, you have the authority to call a special meeting um, at any time uh, so that that is something that uh, you can do in terms of um, deciding if we need another work session, if that would be efficient and effective. Um, the legal question I wanted to ask Mr. Brusades about the process is if board members, if a majority of the board wants to call a special meeting or a work session, um, how, what is the, how would that be done? As contrasted with the chair. Uh, yes, and and if this is um, something that you need to research and email us, uh, I understand that. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely need to, to look into that, but if you could restate the question just so I'm clear on it. So if at a point when the board is not in a meeting, but our policy allows a majority of the board to call a special meeting. What is the proper process? What would the process be? 
Mr. Mercedes, could you email that directly to Ms. Clausey? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Dr. Hager, you have a question? Excuse me, Madam Chair, I would request that it go to all board members. Well, you're the one making the request, so it could um, he could email it that to you, and then you could perhaps share it. Um, Dr. Hager, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I, I just similar in the same vein as uh, the last two questions. It does seem that our, our next two work sessions are part of other of board meetings where we have other business to attend to. So it, it seems like we're going to need a work session um, outside of the two board meetings. So it, is that something that we need to make a motion about or is that something that just happens because we all recognize that it's needed? Um, I, so I guess it is a similar question to Kathleen's. Or is that something that, that we will just have to schedule and plan? Dr. Williams, could you answer that? Um, to create an additional work session and the availability of that, would that be something that would be able, I guess, what would the timeline for that look like? So thank you, um, Chairwoman Scott. So like last year, we had scheduled an additional work session um, because we were meeting face to face and we had snow dates just in case there was inclement weather. Uh, and so I think if if going through this process, if we need additional session, I think that can be arranged. Um, I will keep in mind, like Mr. Sarah said, that uh, we can actually um, use February 23rd but I understand what you're saying, Dr. Hager. Those are already scheduled board meetings. And so um, at this point, without knowing all of the questions for the, from the board members, um, it is hard to tell. Our, our biggest task now is trying to get as much information as possible for the 19th. And so maybe on the 19th, there may be a motion to say this is where we are, this is what we provided, there may be a need for an additional work session that would have to be scheduled. Um, and again, that's how we are managing uh, the recovery. It's every week we're, we're learning more information. And so maybe at that point in January 19th, may be a time to make a motion for a specific um, work session or additional work session that would have to be scheduled based on the availability of board members, if that makes sense. Yes, I think that's a good plan. So next week we can see kind of where we are and at that point decide if a dedicated work session is necessary. Yes. Thank, thank you. That, that might be a good compromise at this time. Thank you, Dr. Hager. Uh, Mr. Offerman. Yes, I would only say that this time that if we do fix su such such a, uh, a work session, which I think is, is very much going to be needed, that we do it with the understanding that whatever book is available at a reasonable time before that work session would be the final book that, that we would be able to consider. Because if we're going to do changes all the way up until the last minute, how can we discuss, uh, you know, how can we discuss uh, and 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 ask questions if you know we have to have some point at which we say this is the data which we're going to function with. So I would only suggest that 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 when the uh, when the uh, when the date for the uh, for, for, for the proposed session is made, that we also affix a date on on uh, from which uh, data data will be used. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. OK, so based on um, the um, the motion and um, that it passed, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next board, the board's next meeting um, will be held virtually on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021 at 630 p.m. So I thank everybody for joining us tonight and the meeting is now adjourned. Have a good evening.